Good morning all. I was watching a video the other day uh, by AVE and he was messing around with a 555 timer and a little piezo sounder and a speaker and making little noises I suppose and I thought I want to play with a 555 timer so I've wired one up in classic A-stable multi-vibrator mode and uh, I've got a pot on uh, pins well, eight, seven, and six, it acts as two resistors because you need a resistor from seven to eight and another one from seven to six. Got a capacitor between pins one and two, got a link running from pin six back to pin two, and an LED on the output pin, which is pin three, and then running to ground, which is pin one. And the question I'm asking myself is how fast can a 555 timer oscillate? Well, Obviously it can oscillate this fast, because that's not very fast, that's just a few hertz to flash an LED on and off, but uh, let's take it up to the next level. So now it's uh, oscillating probably at around 10 kilohertz, I expect you can hear it, coming through this piezo sounder. Uh, what have we got now? I've got a 2N2 capacitor, uh, 503 pot, that's 50k. Incidentally, I should have mentioned that I'm running this from around 5 volts for uh, Eneloop nickel metal hydrides. Let's just try adjusting the frequency a bit. Yeah, we can take that down, we can take it up. Ooh. <laughs> it's not terribly happy down at that low end, probably because that resistor between 7 and 8 gets very low. But yeah, we can adjust the frequency of that. But what about higher frequencies still? Right, you'll probably be relieved to hear that that's the end of the high-pitched squealing because for frequencies higher than, well, about 20 kilohertz, the only way we can see them is on the scope. So let's uh, start that going. Right, so what have we got on here? We've got a square wave and the frequency was 7.9 kilohertz. I've not changed the components uh, since the pizza was in there. Now let's change this 2N2 capacitor for a lower value and see if we can get a higher frequency. Right, out with the 2N2 and in with a 220 puff, 220 picofarad capacitor. What have we got there? Let's open that out. Right, that's 57 kilohertz. But actually, uh, when there was no capacitor in there at all, it seemed to be going faster still. So let's have naught picofarads. I mean, there will be a little bit of capacitance between pins one and two on the chip, um, just through the tracks or the metal strips in the breadboard. So we've probably got a few picofarads there. Now I'm just going to adjust the pot so that it's uh, a bit nearer a 50% mark space. If I can, that means taking it down to the low end. That also seems to be taking the frequency up. So that's got uh, 571 kilohertz. Well, that's not bad. So how fast are these chips actually meant to go? Let's have a look at the data sheet. So here's a data sheet. Uh, this is actually an ST microelectronics data sheet for the 555. And it says here maximum operating frequency greater than 500 kilohertz. Well, we just had greater than 500 kilohertz, didn't we? In fact, 582 kilohertz I've got here. But can we push this thing even uh, further to go even faster? Well, as well as redu reducing the value of the capacitor, we can also reduce the value of the resistors so that more current is flowing and pushing the, uh, the circuit up and down more quickly. Now that's a 50K. How about I change that for a 5K resistor? Right, that's a 5K resistor put in there. Now I need to tweak it so that we get closer to the 50% mark space, but it gets very unstable around this area. And it's hard to get it settled. Wow, 950 kilohertz. And I think I saw over a megahertz just then. I can just coax it to sit in that position where it's at the highest frequency. Yeah, look at that. 
1.03 megahertz. Fantastic. Now, what about a higher voltage? Because uh, I'm driving this from about 5 volts. What if I stick 12 volts on there? Uh, the chip itself can go up to... What's it say on the data sheet? Yeah, so the data sheet says 18 volts absolute maximum. Let's try 12 volts and see uh, whether we can get this to go even faster than, well, 1.1 megahertz now. Right, that's on 12 volts. Um, I've got uh, these Eneloop lights, 10 of them. So 10 times 1.2 is 12 volts. And I'm struggling to get that frequency anywhere near as high as I had it on 5 volts. I'm struggling to get anything to come out of this at all now. Um, why does that keep cutting out? Oh, something smells a bit hot. Is that chip getting hot? Let's take that wire out. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's pretty warm. Well, it doesn't seem to like 12 volts, so let's go back to 5. And of course, it's entirely possible that it will run faster at lower voltages. After all, the fastest CPUs are the lower voltage ones, because then you don't have to swing the voltage rail so far each time you switch the thing on and off. Now I'm struggling now to get back to that 1.1 megahertz that I had before, possibly because I've cooked the chip. I don't know, but it's just not doing it now. 600 kilohertz. Now I've heard that the CMOS version of the 555, this one here, the 7555, uh, can oscillate at a higher frequency than the bipolar version, but I've never actually tested it, so that's what I want to do now. I want to see how fast the CMOS one can go. Now this Intercell datasheet the, for the ICM7555 says high speed operation 1 megahertz. But uh, this NXP datasheet says high speed operation 500 kilohertz guaranteed. So this one's not quite so optimistic. So I think we're just going to have to, in fact, that's no better than the um, any 555, is it? The bipolar one. So let's give it a try and see how far we can push it. Right, that's the 555, or the 7555 in there. It's actually a TA7555. I couldn't find a data sheet for that uh, immediately. Uh, so I'm not sure what brand it is. Right, now that's uh, no capacitor the 5k pot. Let's tweak that. Uh, let's turn this up a bit for even mark space before it goes funny. Seems pretty odd having a job uh, triggering on that one. Ah, now we've got 1.4 megahertz there. See if we can do even better than that. It's very difficult to get a stable trace with the resistor values this low. And then it seems to just, ah, oh, what's that? 1.5 megahertz. And it's speeding up. 1.6 megahertz. Well, it certainly seems to be uh, a fair bit faster than the uh, bipolar, which didn't go much above 1 megahertz. I've got sort of 1.6 megahertz out of here, but I can't get a very stable trace on the scope. That's about the best I can do. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Uh, right, well now I've actually got 2.2 megahertz by putting in a 1k pot. So there isn't much resistance. There's only a few hundred ohms uh, between 7 and VDD, it would be now. Uh, a bit more than 500 ohms between 7 and 6. But yeah, I managed to push that one up to 2.25 megahertz. That's not bad, is it? And uh, unlike the bipolar uh, 555 at high frequency, this one's not getting hot. This one seems quite happy operating at that frequency. So I think that's probably about as fast as you can push a 
a 7555 timer, 2.25 megahertz. So there it is. Uh, the data sheets are a bit vague on the subject of maximum frequency, 500 kilohertz for the bipolar, and some say 500 kilohertz for the CMOS, or uh, one megahertz, but you can push them both uh, further than that. Now I'm not saying that's how you should operate them because that's pushing them right to the limit, but uh, yeah, one meg for the uh, bipolar and 2.25 megs for the CMOS. Well, I think that concludes my tests of the 555 timer. Cheerio.